Hello, Serious Survivor here, and today we're going to look at the dangers of animals when bugging out. When we think about an SHTF situation or some type of situation that causes people to leave the urban environment and bug out into a wilderness, forest type of setting, then there's a lot more to surviving this type of setting than just pitching a tent and making a fire and boiling some water. There are many other factors that need to be taken into consideration. Now granted, Mother Nature does provide everything we need to survive, but along with those survival items are a lot of dangers that we will face. And some of those dangers are the wildlife that will be in the general area in which you're bugging out to. For those who are familiar with wildlife and those who are familiar with forest and wilderness type of settings, then you're already familiar with a lot of these. But for the majority of people in the United States who don't make it to the forest and don't make it into the wilderness uh, at any point in their lives or very limited amounts of time, then there can be a lot of unexpected dangers. For example, in a normal setting, the average annual fatalities by animals in the United States is 53 for bees and wasps, 31 by dogs, 22 people are killed each year by cows, 20 from horses, 6.6 .6 by spiders, snakes 5.5 .5 people, bears an average of 3.5, bulls 3, mountain lions 1, scorpions and centipedes 1, alligators 0.3 and wolves 0.1 so these numbers do not add up to a massive amount of course as we can see but even in our civilized world as it is right now when not many people venture out into the wilderness then these numbers are a lot higher than they may actually seem and what we have to factor in is when people are leaving the cities and people are going into the woods and they're disturbing the natural habitat of these animals these attacks are going to increase dramatically and it's not really the animals fault because we would be invading their territory but no matter where the fault may lie, the fact remains the danger still exists. We're gonna cover a lot of these different animals in this series, and we're gonna start off by talking about the different spiders. Spiders are often not thought about because they're so small, we don't see them, and they don't seem to be much of a threat. But in the United States, there are four major types of spiders that we really have to worry about. And I'm gonna focus on the four most common types that we'll run across here. And I'll also put up a list at the end of the video of some other types that are not as threatening but you may run across and it's good to be able to identify these so let's get started to begin with of the estimated 170,000 species of spiders in the world only a handful of these are considered to be dangerous to humans and only 27 of these are known to have caused human fatalities even though some may have a fear of spiders it seems that venomous spiders are not as big of a threat as it seems but we need to be able to recognize these to understand the threat that they do pose we're gonna look at the four most venomous and most common spiders in the US. Number four, the yellow sack spider or black-footed spider. A hundred species of sack spiders are found worldwide and several species have caused envenomations. In the US, bites have occurred from Massachusetts to California and Hawaii. This is a medium-sized spider, about six to 10 millimeters in length. It's pale yellow to greenish or even pinkish or tan colored. The body color of this spider depends upon the prey that it has recently eaten. Yellow sack spiders are often found in homes throughout the American continent. They build silk retreats and curled leaves or sometimes in crevices. Generally, the bites occur at night when these nocturnal hunters encounter a sleeping human. Yellow sack spiders are believed to be responsible for the majority of nuisance bites to humans in North America. This species has a mildly toxic venom. Bites can be very painful and can cause skin irritations. Even though these wounds may become slightly necrotic, they usually tend to heal rapidly with little to no scarring. But keep in mind that not all spiders would be considered venomous or deadly, but just like bees and wasps, there are a lot of people who will have an allergic reaction to any type of these spider bites, so being able to recognize these is of the utmost importance. Number three, hobo spider. These are found in the western USA from Washington to Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, northern Utah, and Colorado, as well as southwestern Canada. They commonly live in dry or arid environments. These brown spiders measure roughly seven to 16 millimeters or a third to two thirds of an inch in body length 
and 16 to 50 millimeters or two thirds of an inch to two inches in leg span. Their abdomens have several chevron shaped or herringbone like markings. Females tend to have a larger and rounder abdomen than the males do. Hobo spiders are common around and inside of human structures. They rarely climb vertical surfaces and they're not very common above the basement or ground level. They build a horizontal web and retreat into a hole or crack in the brick walls or wood piles while they await their prey. Hobo spiders are known to be quite aggressive and they will bite with little to no provocation. In recent times, they've been known to cause damage in the U.S. Pacific Northwest. Although this species was accidentally introduced to North America from Europe as recently as the 1900s via commercial shipping, the symptoms of a hobo spider bite are similar to that of the recluse spider, only with a lesser severity. Though the bite of a hobo spider is initially painless, it can be serious. A redness will first appear around the site, which will develop into a blister after about 24 hours. Then it will break open, leaving an open, oozing ulceration. The bite may also cause severe headaches lasting two to seven days and even nausea, weakness, fatigue, malaise, or temporary memory loss and vision impairment. Severe lesions will take several months to heal. Medical attention should be sought immediately when bitten. Number two. The widows. These comprise 32 identified species. It's found worldwide. This species has been considered problematic for a long time due to the difficulty associated with morphological features exhibiting geographic variation. The black widow spider and southern black widow are the most common species in North America, and they occur throughout North America from Canada to Mexico and even in the West Indies. The black widow measures approximately 1.2 centimeters or a half inch in body length. The female is normally shiny black with a yellowish orange to reddish colored hourglass. Sometimes this is just a dot uh, marking on the underside of the abdomen. Black widow spiders need some kind of shelter and can often be seen in small crevices, wood piles, rubbish piles, under stones and hollow stumps, sheds, garages, anywhere that they can hide. Indoors, they are sometimes found in undisturbed, cluttered areas in basements, in crawl spaces, underneath homes. They build strong retreats close to the ground, but they can also spread their web over plants. The black widow is notorious at being one of the most venomous spiders in the world. It inflicts a painful bite, which can be fatal, especially to the young and elderly. Only a small amount of venom can cause serious illness, as the neurotoxic poison, which is 15 times as toxic as the venom of a prairie rattlesnake, attacks the nervous system. Systematic envenomization usually results in headache, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, pyrexia, and hypertension. First aid and medical attention should be sought immediately. People with heart conditions or other heart problems will require hospitalization. But less than 1% of all people bitten by this type of spider actually run the risk of dying, and most of them are saved with the use of an effective anti-venin. And this was developed in 1956. Other North American widow spiders are the red widow, found in Florida, the brown and gray widow, the western black widow, and the northern black widow. Recluse spiders. There are 11 species of recluse spiders in North America. The brown recluse spider. This highly venomous spider is thought to be the most dangerous recluse spider. It's found in the USA from the Atlantic to the Pacific coast and mainly in the southern states though. This species measures six to 18 millimeters, about a quarter inch to three quarters inch in body length. A dark violin shape is located on the top of the leg attachment region with the neck of the violin pointing towards the abdomen. When most spiders have eight eyes, the recluse spiders only have six eyes arranged in pairs, one pair in front and a pair on either side. The brown recluse spider's venom can cause significant cutaneous injuries with tissue loss and necrosis, and this can be deadly to humans. However, though it's very dangerous to people, it's not an aggressive species and only bites when threatened. 
those are the most dangerous spiders that we're likely to run across. There are a few more, and I'm going to put up some information on those here. Just something that we want to keep in mind because we hear a lot about people talking about bugging out to the woods, you know, where they're going to go, what they're going to do. There is a lot more that needs to be taken into consideration than just simply putting a pack on your shoulders and walking out into the middle of the wilderness. We have to understand nature. We have to know nature, and we have to connect with it. And to do that, we have to know not only what benefits are there, but what dangers are there also. Well, I hope the video was informative. I hope it helps out. Make sure to keep an eye on the channel. I've got a lot more coming out in this series and a lot more coming out in general. Thanks a lot for watching. And for now, Serious Survivor, out.